Okay guys, so today I just want to show you that uh, how to find out the instantaneous rate of change by using the TI-84 uh, with the slope formula with the input of the function and the slope formula. So let's start with the functions. So the one that we have on the homework, so this one is for number 8 for the calculus textbook by James Stewart. And this one, the position function, we got 2 sine of pi t. So since this one is a trig function, so make sure that the mo you need to put into in radian. Okay, so go to mo and then make sure that you put in radian. Okay, so this one is already in radian form. So go back to y equal. Okay. And now we want to put in the functions to sine of pi t. So pi x. And then close parentheses. And now we do have 3 cosine of pi t. So plus 3 cosine of pi and then x. Now for those you might be wondering how do you put in the slow formula into the function here. So for the next function y2, so we want to put in the slow formula. And we do know that the initial time, it's 1. So we want to approximate that the instantaneous rate of change at 1 second. So the first time interval is from 1 to 2, from 1 second to 2 second. So what we want to do here, so we just want to put in general. So vars, well, we need to start it with the parentheses there first. So let's go back. So for y2, okay, once again, so open parentheses. And then we want to go to vars, y vars, functions, y1. And then this one you want to put in general, so it's y1 of x. Because that later we can put in the time interval, 2 second, 1.1 second, 1.01 second. So it can be any random x value. And then minus, so since we started with the initial time at 1 second, so we want to go to vars again, y vars, functions, y1 of 1. So that would be giving you the positions at 1 second. So basically the top part right here, this one y2, so this one shows that the rate of ch um, the change of the y value. And now you divide it by x minus 1, the change of the time. And then now the next thing that you want to do, you want to go to second and table. Okay, so second graph. And as you can see that here, this one is the x column, y1 column, the positions, y2, then that shows the rate of change. So now in order to enter the random number for the x value, so you want to go to second, table sets. So this one is just the setting. And make sure that the independent variable here, make sure that got to be highlighted in ask. So just scroll it down by pressing the down cursor, go to ask, and then press enter. Make sure that you need to highlight it, it's ask. And then dependent variable, it gotta be auto or automatic. And now you wanna go to second table again. So now let's find out that the rate of change from one second to two seconds. So I put in two. So the rate of change would be six. And then from one second to 1.1 seconds, so we put in 1.1. And that would give me negative 4.712. And then 1.01. So from 1 second to 1.01 second. Well, the time interval, so this one's getting very narrow. The small gap, you know, so because we try to approximate the rate of change at 1 second. So this one is getting even closer, so it's negative 6.134. And then the next approximation, we want to put in 1.001. 1 and we do have negative 6.268. And let's try that one more time. So let's say 1.0001. 1 it's getting even closer at one second. So it looks like it's going to be negative 6.282. And guess what? Instantaneous rate of change at one second. So it's going to be about negative 6.282. So 
So let's say that we want to sketch the graph for this. So let's say y1 at one second. Okay, y2. We don't want to graph that one, so let's just highlight the first one. Okay, so sketch the graph. So as you can see that this one is just like a combination of a sine curve and a cosine curve. So at one second, you guys see that the rate of change. So this one is going to be like a tangent line. So the line is what is going down. So that means the rate of change is considered negative. Okay. So the rate of change that we find out back to the table. So that one is about, well, need to go back to y equal, highlight it with the y2. Okay, and then back to second table. So close, well, approximately at one second. So this one is about negative 6.282 meter per second or centimeter per second. Okay. So in order to find the tangent line, so we just want to sketch the graph with that y equals mx plus b. So the rate of change we found, it's negative 6.282. And then using that x1, y1. So x1 is about, well, one second. And then y1, then that would be considered negative 3. Okay, so let's say that you put in back to the functions. So to find the equation of a tangent line, if you try to do that on the paper. So that one is about y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, the point slope form. So the rate of change for that one is negative 6.268. Well, it's negative 6.282. And then x minus x1. So x1, you're just plugging 1 back to the original functions. So then that would give you negative 3. So negative 3, so y plus 3. And then x minus 1. So we got negative 6.282x minus 1 minus 3. Then, well, minus, well, negative 1 times negative 6.282. Then that would be positive 6.282 minus 3. So we got y equals negative 6.282x minus, well, plus 3.282. So let's just plug in that function there. Again, just want to show that the tangent line at one second. So for y3, okay, press enter. Okay, highlight it first. So this one is negative. 6.282x. Well, because what I did, I just do that on the scratch paper to convert that to the, the slope intercept form. Plus 3.282. And then I'll just hit graph. So again, this one shows the tangent line at one second. Okay, see that this line right here? So that shows the tangent. So again, anytime they want to find out the rate of change, it's always using that vars, y vars, functions, y1. So you put it into the general form, y1x minus y1 with the initial time, and then over, and then x minus the initial time. And then go to second table, so we can get that the average rate of change. And again, the closer the number that you put in for one, the more accurate the rate of change is going to be for the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, so thank you for watching the video today.